We all know that it's really good to learn CPR and first aid, of course. Yes. But have you ever thought of learning it when it comes to your pets? Probably not. Mm -mm. Well, now is your chance to change that. We're here with Becky Day, and she's going to be teaching uh, CPR and first aid classes at Crossroads Pets and Crossroads Campus. Tell us about these classes. Well, the, the classes are designed for pet owners who have no medical training. Mm -hmm. And the idea is to empower pet owners to help our pets when they get into a medical emergency. Mm -hmm. So the idea is we're not helpless. If our pet is choking, if our pet mm -hmm. needs CPR, we'll be able to do that. And we also talk about um, identifying the signs of some other life-threatening emergencies, what to do, how to recognize the signs. And the, these are serious emergencies, so our goal is not to fix our pet. Our goal is to keep our pet alive until we can get them to the vet. Mm -hmm. What are some of the signs that you want to look for? Well, um, depending on what it, what it is, for example, um, dogs tend to get bloat a lot. Mm -hmm. And so with something like that, um, enlarged stomach, painful, they're restless, um, they they don't want to you know they they don't want to sit or stand they try to they sit they stand they sit they stand um, so that's one of them um, we um, for example a choking a lot of times pets will be chewing on toys or treats or different things mm. socks and they swallow them mm. and they start choking and we're not helpless you know we can do the Heimlich we can do finger sweeps we can do a number of things to help clear the pets airway well it's interesting that you said that because um, I had a medical emergency with one of my dogs and the only thing I knew to do my friend was with me was call 911 of course they said we, we there's nothing we can do but in that moment no matter what it's like the blood rushes out of you you have no idea what you feel right. hopeless so right. I'm so thankful that you're teaching this mm -hmm. so you're gonna show us how to do a Heimlich maneuver on our beautiful little dogs here they're kind of blending in with our outfits <laughs> yeah. but let me show you okay so show me what to do okay well first of all if you notice that your pet is okay. choking this is for dogs and cats I'm gonna move to um, the side. you would notice that um, your your pet is, is having trouble breathing they're making a wheezing high-pitched noise if the pet can cough or gag, let the pet continue. Chances are pretty good they'll clear their airway. If they can't, you need to take action. The first thing you'll want to do is open the mouth, look in there, see if you can see the thing they're choking on. Mm -hmm. See if you can reach in and pull it out. Caution, you could get bit. That's okay. So you just Thank have you. to make the best decision you can at that time. If you can't see the object or you're concerned about um, sticking your hand in there, you can do the Heimlich. Mm -hmm. now, on people, when you do the Heimlich, you want to press in on the diaphragm, and that's located, if you find your last rib uh -huh. right in the uh -huh. center, that's the same place on our pets. Okay. So if you find the last rib on your pet, and you find there's a li the little spot in the middle, mm -hmm. and we want to let gravity help us, so we're actually going to turn mm. the pet upside oh. down, oh, okay. oh. and then we're going to make a, a fist, and we're going to put our fist right on that spot, right okay. on that diaphragm, oh. and we're just going to oh. give okay. it some... Okay. Give it some muscle. Okay. okay. With the back to your stomach. Yeah. Got yeah. it. Okay. Back to your stomach, head down. Okay. Got it. Okay. Now you do that a couple of times. Now the the what would be great is if the thing, you know, flew out, hit the wall, right. you know, but maybe that didn't happen. But maybe you moved it just enough now that you can get it out. Okay? Yes. You can repeat this a number of times. Okay. You can also do like back slaps oh. you know I mean if you're if you're in a situation your pet is choking and not breathing there's really not much you can do to make the situation worse so you okay. might as well just okay. try it and just I do, do obviously want to mention any of those moves you would never do on an animal otherwise this is for life saving only Good point. right um, and crossroads where you're going to be teaching this class is an animal rescue they're awesome yes. so I do like to mention that because they they just are amazing yes yes now quick quick question have you ever had any um, participants who've had to put this into practice yes a number really a number of people I have oh. gotten a number of emails and phone calls from people who actually have used this oh wow in fact it's it's actually funny because the woman who is the chairman of the Crossroads board, she actually took this class from me a couple years ago and she remembered it and she said she actually did this to her pet. Mm. I even had a woman say she did it on a pig. The pig Whoa. was choking oh, on wow. an apple and she did it. Wow. So it's, it is something that is very effective. It's something we pet owners can do to help our pet. Mm. You know? And then well, we also we talk about CPR too. So if the pet passes out, if the pet is not breathing and has no heartbeat, just like you would do with a person, you, we would do CPR. So we talk about that in the class. We do mouth-to-snout resuscitation. 
you know, with people, it's mouth mm -hmm. to mouth, right. but with our pets, it's mouth to, it's snout. Mouth to snout. No, you are Sense. just, these are life saving yeah. tips. Thank you so, so Thank much. You. Yes. Thank you very much. Thanks yes. to Crossroads Campus for putting mm -hmm. it on. And each class is $25. It's a donation. And you can learn more at crossroadscampus.org or email Becky Dan at crossroadscampus.org. You can see that on your screen right there.